Good morning, afternoon, or evening. Welcome to the Not So Daily Show. The show that comes to you daily, except when it doesn't. I'm your host, Tim McKibben. To my right, we have got political analyst and guy with the coolest name in the world, Temba Malilek. And to my left, we've got my good friend and business partner, Titelo Blaze. What's up, brother? Easy. So last week, I started the show by saying that Blaze Zimande is not as sharp as his name suggests. Well, I was wrong. To put it bluntly, pun intended, he's a fucking idiot. He just compared the fees protest to a soapy that he sees every year. A soapy, specifically the bold and the beautiful. The soapy about rich people that have nothing to worry about. Every year, it's like a soapy now, you know? The bold and the beautiful. Every beginning of the year, there is. From this video, I think it's now clear that our politicians can no longer relate to the people. I mean, I can't imagine anyone that has ever struggled to pay a child's fees saying something like this. Yeah. What do you guys? What do you guys think? Like a politician, a father, like a grown man, saying this about protests where kids are struggling for education. Who's also the minister of higher education? Of higher education. <laughs> like it just goes back to a point we made last week. You are the problem, yeah. and you are either the ANC, you're either supporting or mocking, yeah. but you are the problem. Yeah. Look, like he said, it's a soapy that he's executive producing. <laughs> I mean, he's been there for how many years now? Six years? And the problem is still the same. Nothing has changed. As minister. Yeah, as minister. as minister. Since Zuma's time, now in Cyril's time, also nothing has changed. Okay. So, what is the problem here, actually? What is the problem? And, dude, this guy, clearly, he's... He's actually making the point for the guys who say Blade must uh, resign, yeah. Blade must fall, because you've been there for so long, and you are the one admitting that, oh, guys, I haven't been doing a good job exactly. for so long. Exactly. So, you say six years, like, okay, it's so crazy. he was there when this movement began. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, of course, it's a soul beat for you, because you've been there. And all it's time. happening every single year. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. honestly, what is he doing? Yeah. I think he's, he's acting as if, like, no student wants to be a I man. Movements only arise from problems, yes. you know what I mean? So obviously, they need to, his office needs to figure out how to cancel the soap. And I mean, <laughs> dude, it's one thing, we've, we've known that like fees have been a problem forever, right? And students would fight for fees, but the reason it boiled over is because the government came out and said, you guys will get free education. And now when the students say, where is this free education? You fight back violently as the government that promised it. And now somebody died. And you're making jokes like, this is a soapy. soapy it's not a fucking soapy, dog. This is not melodrama. This is yeah, real shit. People bad. are losing lives, you know? And now Blade, is the same guy who's in the meetings where they say, we'll cut budget. We're going to do this. Yeah. Can't he say, guys, you saw what happened last year yeah. when we had more budget. Imagine what will happen this year. Instead, he's like, ah, let's chill and watch the soapy again. I mean, look. Planning. Where is the planning? I mean, they should know that by now that, okay, look, in four or five years, this is how much money we need to spend it's to actually big. achieve free education based on the amount of intakes that the university has been taking in for the last couple of years. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure you can do some projections based on that, but I mean, what this shows is that they're not doing anything. They're, doing anything. They're, honest. they're working their years, getting their fat paychecks, but where is the planning to ensure that, okay, in the next five, ten years, none of this happens. But at the way it looks right now is that in the next five, ten years, we might still be sitting here hopefully on a bigger platform still talking about still the same thing unfortunately same thing. you know so yeah. it's great take this yeah i feel like it's uh, like we, we have so many issues in this country which we've had yeah for years and years yes. and it's just like when you look at escom like all the, the the stuff that's been happening there like it's been going on for years for years we've been experiencing all shit like yeah for years and when you say planning like i go to load shedding yeah. like, i don't understand how after all this time there isn't like a, a way forward instead yeah. of saying expect load shedding so for five, five years. years. Yeah. So even with education, I feel like it's the same. Right? Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, and what's worse is that it's the same politicians yeah. who have been in power for the yeah, longest time. Man. All that happens is reshuffle. Yeah. Worse than not even shuffling blades, but blade. blades. Yeah, <laughs> blades. <laughs> yeah, it's still, it's still right there. It's the same guy. Yeah. So you think that with that consistency, you would, you know. would yeah, you'd get some sort of better plans and planning mm, exactly. based on that same person being then being able to implement those plans those and plans. seeing everything through. So. Like I said, he knows, bro. But yeah. when I heard Blade speak, I was just like, where is Dalim Pofu? <laughs> to put those words now. <laughs> to put those words now. <laughs> If you haven't seen Dali yeah. in action, check this out. Moyani. Yeah, but uh, 
what does the May, may I make a brief comment here so we can conclude this matter? No, Chair, can I object before he makes any comment brief or yeah. otherwise? Mm. Chair, all I, sorts, no, can I just explain the question? Okay. Mr. Moyani makes allegations. Chair, I'm on the floor. Really, I can't stand this. Okay. This cannot okay. be happening okay. for the third time. Mr. Ms. Leroux Mr. must shut up when Mr. I'm speaking. Mr. let okay. me just hear please. You. Okay. Must you yeah, just hear you too, Mr. Kuda? So Mpofu, if, uh, I'm still on the, on, the, on the floor. Ms. You also shut up. No, no, Mr. Mpofu, I'm in charge here. Please sit down. Let me hear first. But I'm still talking, she Chair. She butted yes, in. Yes, but she had not so explained. So why must I, I sit down? I want to hear her explanation, then hear you. Then I'll. No, but Chair, I'm still speaking. Why must I be yes, the one who sits Mpofu, down? Yes, Mr. Mpofu, I'm in charge here. I'm saying sit down. Well, Chair. Please. I'll hear, hear her, and then I'll hear you. Chair, this maybe then we should leave, because if we're not allowed to speak, I'm and we, are, you we allow interruptions... We are going to be allowed to no. speak. Uh, this past week at the State Capital Commission, there was an incident where uh, Advocate Dalim Pofu told uh, Pravin Godan's lawyer, Ms. Michelle Leroux, yeah. Advocate Michelle Leroux, to shut up, and also <laughs> Pravin Godan himself to shut up. So guys, there are two, there are two arguments. Yeah. Uh, some people say that um, uh, Advocate Dalimpov was provoked okay. by Michelle Leroux. Yeah. And then other people say, you know, Advocate Dalimpov, in his experience, shouldn't have told her to shut up. Well, which I agree to because I feel like, why tell Miss Leroux to shut up when you can tell her to JC Leroux? Yeah, <laughs> 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 you know, <you're> JC. You know? <laughs> but <laughs> what, what is your thought? Because I'm like, it's not the first time we hear shut up on, on, on TV. Yeah. And shut up, you stay nasen and listen. The president himself has said, and you stay nasen, yeah, shut, yeah, shut yeah. up, you know? But uh, because I don't know if it's Twitter backlash or what, yeah. uh, I, um, DCJ yeah. Zondo went and watched uh, the VAR and came back <laughs> to, to say no. <laughs> but when it happened, he didn't say anything. Yeah. Zondo has reprimanded advocate Dalim Bofu for his conduct at the commission in Johannesburg. But some are questioning why the chair did not act immediately, as this was not the first time where legal minds clashed during the hearing. Who was wrong, and if it was such a big deal, why was it not addressed right then and then? Okay, personally, I think, right, even how it was received, like those two opinions that you're talking about, the two sides to this matter, it boils down to maybe how the DCJ has been handling the commission and how maybe some people feel like there's certain people that has been handling with kid gloves, yeah. right, protecting them, and then other ones are protecting. So in this case, obviously, people are saying it's been protecting your Pravin Kodans, mm. even though obviously they're legal or they're lawyers. Yeah. So, that, I mean, they can actually push the envelope in what they do what they and do. what they say in comparison to the people who are the state capturers, they might mm. not be as protected by the DCG mm. and hence maybe the frustration from, from the, the Dawil, Dawil Bofu. Bofu. He's a senior counsel, I mean he's been in the game for a long time and then this lady obviously according to him was bickering and bickering and, bickering. and interjecting and obviously as a senior he probably thought that maybe that she should afford him a bit more respect, yeah. one, and two, the DCG should have um, protected him yes. with him being on the floor yeah. and her just keep uh, interjecting as he was talking. Exactly. So I think maybe that's what it is, but I don't know. I understand both sides of it, right? Yeah. But they'll say that it was a bit disrespectful, but obviously it's heated. It's Praveen, heated, uh, Praveen um, and Dalim Bofu, EFF, you the know, all those tensions, yeah, comorbidities. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. Like, as you said, he's an experienced mm. um, what senior Cal counsel, counsel yeah. and I think because of that, like he should know better. Yeah. Like despite how heated these yeah. things can get, you should still conduct yourself with you know respect people. Decorum. Yeah. Yeah. Decorum. Yeah. 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 It's, it's weird, and and when you guys speak of yeah. that, I'm like it, at the state capture commission. Two things: state capture commission and parliament. Yeah. I feel like as as like a a, a young adult, yeah. right? Where, when I look at that, I'm like, yo, are these really grown-ups? Yeah. When, when mm -hmm. Dalim Pofu said, shut up, Pravin said, yo, <laughs> yo, <laughs> like, you guys are grown men, yeah. bro, like, you know, so, so it's just a weird dynamic yeah. that exists in those areas, and, but people ask, sure, but are we telling our kids that should you be provoked enough, you can say stuff like, 
shut up. Yeah. And I'm not even going to put on Dali alone because, yeah. like I've said, we've heard yeah. Cyril Ramaphosa yeah. say a new DNA is and shut yeah. up. So, yeah. is it like, yeah, is, is this really like how we should be handling ourselves? Should we, should we just accept that these yeah. things happen, or is there like a, a really it needs to be addressed from the top to be like, yo, guys, like okay, like Blaze was saying, right? Um, the context is very crucial, and especially in this case. I mean, I was actually watching it for most of the day. And it was kind of heated between Paravin yeah, and, and, yeah. and Stalin Bofu at that time. Have, uh, um, and I think what they were talking about mostly was how condescending Mr. Godan actually is to black employees, black subordinates, or people that are working in his department, I whether see. it's a state owned entity or in his department. So, in that context, Stalin Bofu probably felt that Godan and his lawyer were being condescending towards him. Hence, why. Hence she did what she was doing, yeah. the bickering in, the jumping in, yeah. as was, as he was talking, and maybe I think that's what kind of led to that reaction. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was actually a reaction that they were looking for, you know, as that side. Mm. Mm. You think it was a race thing? Like, because I mean, we all know, like, it's a power thing. Like people, it's a power. It's a power thing. Yeah. Danny Bovo being True. senior to True. her, you know, obviously felt disrespected that True. she's disrespecting his authority as someone who is senior to her. But I wanted to yeah. ask yeah. that in professional spaces, should yeah. age and and uh, the likes matter because yeah, you might be senior counsel yeah but now in this context she's representing Pravin. Yeah. you are representing tom moyan Tom-Moyan, yeah. Yeah. you guys are on this you're equals it doesn't matter how long you've been there how long i've been there as much as because of the um yeah. discipline they're in yeah. it's public but, knowledge but i think in, in, in that legal fraternity and lawyers you know they can correct yeah. us in the comment section right yeah. but when you get that silk that Daniel bofu has yeah it's a different type of silk than uh, an ad- advocate. But, but if somebody is representing you, do you want your lawyer, your advocate, to respect to the other side? Obviously not. You no, see. obviously not. But in that setting, it's a commission, not the court of law, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's, it's inquisitive yeah. by nature. We're trying to find out. To find out. Yeah. You know, we're not in a trial or anything like that. So you'd expect also every form of the different councils to show some sort of respect, respect. to the other one. The other council is speaking, yeah. you know, yeah. because whenever someone jumps in, obviously they ask to be protected by the you know, the Chief Justice. So, but in that case, I think it happened too many times, times. and the Chief Justice was not actually doing anything about it. about it. And they actually asked her, him actually, sorry, asked Dalim to sit down to hear what her point is, mid Dalim arguments. I you see. know, so it kind I of really got frustrating yeah, in that I sense see. that I am talking, she jumps in, you recognize her, uh, you tell me to sit down, mm. I am senior. I and and like, I have the floor. I think, like you know, I said, yeah. like in any context yeah. or any other context, yeah. rather, like, we'd also like be or respond in a yeah. similar way. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to be cut off. Yes. You feel disrespected. Exactly. A point amongst people that you either feel are your peers yes. or you feel yes. senior yes. to. Yes. It's like, brother, right, show yeah. Come on. respect. Exactly. And yeah. I, I totally understand. Yeah. And I agree. But anyway, going from the State Capital Commission, let's move on to Super Saiyan lawyer, advocate Tembeka Nogaito. Representing the State Capital Commission in the case against former President Jacob Zuma, advocate Nogaito, we called for Jacob Zuma to firstly pay back the legal fees yeah. for the commission and also go to prison for two years two years guys we've discussed this before yeah now these guys are in court yes. do you guys see it happening look okay constitutional court right my understanding does not hand down sentences mm. you know uh, being um the court obviously that deals with constitutional matters yeah you know so if it's a matter of constitutional importance or master they deal with it, they clarify it, and they make a decision like that. Yes. But I've never heard of the constitutional court actually sending someone to jail, mm-hmm. you know, and hence when we were looking at those arguments that Nugatou was making for the commission, it kind of felt like they were arguing on behalf of the constitutional court as to why they should yeah. send Zuma to, to, to jail. I was about know? to say that they, yeah. were, they, were, they were bargaining for the court to say, you guys were disrespected, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's content, exactly. do something yeah, about it. Yeah. 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 I mean, so, but while this was going on, people were praising Nugai Tobi. Like it was, it was, it was going. People were like, "Yo, this is one of our best." Do you guys, yeah. do you guys agree? Have you, have you, you've never heard him in action, no? Uh, yeah. Look, I've seen him in action before. Heard him in action also in action with Dalim Pofu together. Yeah, together you know, together, yeah. also alone. I mean, I think he's also gotten to a point where he's a standalone. And thing. yeah, you know, I mean, I think we've always been, mm-hmm. he's always been associated as being an EFF lawyer yeah. with Dalim Pofu. But now, I mean, I think he's. Into his, his own, he's doing things yeah, in very good. I mean, it's very good to see top black lawyers Coming representing up. at those levels because I mean, obviously, you know, 
it's always been the white senior councils yeah, that are briefed exactly. by the by the state, state. by the court, the exactly. the commissions and whatnot. But seeing a young do you think, black lawyer doing this, I mean, do you think it's a play? It's a play from the from the commission to use him. Definitely, it's a play to, to use him against definitely. him. Definitely, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Right. but I mean, also kudos to him. I mean, I don't think it's a play based not necessarily on that he's not competent. Yeah, obviously he is competent, but also I think works in their favor. Yeah, 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 definitely. Optics coming yeah, from yeah, the political. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But do you think like will he actually like? Does it mean anything for someone like Zuma to be? For, for him to say his mom might go to jail, like, yeah, uh, and will it go anywhere? Like, for me, I feel like they're just stuck between a rock and a hard place because now it's you bring the, the, the con court in as another player yeah. where it was state capture versus Zuma, yeah. and in the broader scale, it's so seen as ANC's problems. Mm. The ANC is struggling to bring in one of their own, yeah. so now they're bringing in first the state yeah. capture commission. Now the concord to try reel in one, one of their, their own. own. Whereas mm-hmm. this thing should actually be solved by the ANC to say go there. Yeah. But it shows that they don't have power mm-hmm. over 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 one of their own. I'm not a lawyer again, right? Lawyers hit us up in the comment section. <laughs> yeah. um, legally I don't think Zoom is doing anything wrong. Yeah. All right. Okay. And I think, right, I don't know. Yeah, we're they the one to speak. This yeah, is these are our opinions. Yeah, I also have yeah. legal opinions. Yeah. But yeah, like you said, the lawyers will correct Hit us up. Yeah. I think they might just refer it back to the lawyer, the lower courts, especially with the loss of the sentencing and all that. I don't mm. think the constitutional court actually can send someone to jail. Yeah. They've never done it but before. But in content of their, of their ruling. ruling. We'll see so that's, that's the we'll thing. See. I mean, they the fact kind of hard is, these are just ANC squabbles. That's, that's the sad thing. But, that, but that, that's part of yeah. why I'm asking the question of yeah. if it will go anywhere. Because I feel like Zuma is such a, a staple in the ANC yeah. that chances are he's not going to face like active consequences. Exactly. He will be protected in some But way. I mean, also, I think we've touched on this before in the previous episodes. The, what do you call this? The summons that are issued by the Commission, right? Mm. In accordance with the Commission Legislation or Act are accompanied by a sentence of I think a thousand pounds max. Oh seriously? Yeah, something like that, one hundred fifty pounds. Oh, so it's so almost already yeah, detailed. It's always it's usually a fine. There really is no sentence. Mm. You know, so that's why it's also kinda of a little bit weird that they're actually are giving them to be sentenced for two years. And when if you look at the regulations, they don't say anything about being sentenced of up to two years. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But I guess it's, it's interesting with these things because obviously um, they're also trying to yeah, it's always about uh, deterrence, yes. right? Yeah. You want to um, impose such a hectic thing that mm. no one else yeah, just, does. Just so no one else will does it. You know do the I mean? same thing. Yeah. Else yeah. Follow suit. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's definitely a tough one. It's definitely, um, yeah, it, it's just so many moving parts. Yeah, it's just exactly. so many moving parts. Yeah. But yeah, guys, next time we'll have a lawyer <laughs> in here <laughs> to just, you know, guide us through some of the technicalities of it but on the surface i mean i think all the arguments that we're making is what we see as the yeah. public because Believe this stuff it. does yeah. you know affect us as the public yeah. but <laughs> going back just a few steps when i made the joke about uh advocate tim back and i told being a super sane lawyer i did that for two reasons one to highlight the fact that he is a freaking great lawyer yeah. a freaking great legal mind almost super saving level yeah. but two to highlight his hair and the statement it makes, whether intentionally or, un- or unintentionally. Yeah. Because when you see videos like this next one where a black woman who is supposed to be educating kids is standing outside of school forcefully and aggressively combing their hair, you start understanding the statements that guys like DJ Boo and Jay-Z are making by growing out their hair yeah. to show that even billionaires, business people, this is your hair. It says, fuck all about how capable you are of learning in school, yeah. are running a business, arguing in a boardroom. So, if you've seen this video, then you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, check it out real quick. Next! Yo! Next! <laughs> Imagine this is your kid. <laughs> like... Gone from that school. <laughs> My man! <laughs> Bro, and I'm like... What the hell, dude? Like... You know, you know, like the, the strictness in, in this country when it yeah. comes to hair, black hair, black, black hair. hair. Yeah, 
you know, I've always like been so fascinated because I compare it to when you see Amer- African American kids. Mm. The freedom those kids have to like grow up their hair, yeah. do cornrows, all and kinds exactly. of things. And, and you know, with boys also, yeah. like, doing things that seem feminine, like with your hair. Yeah, like, yeah. It, yeah, like it's it's also clear cut your hair must be like this. It's not presentable. Just go out, you know, mm-hmm. It's a lot, it's a mess. <sighs> It's like a kafir hair situation, bro. Yeah, you man. know that black hair is wild. Black hair has to be tamed. It has to be combed to look good, to look neat. You know, while the other people's hair, you know, um, it's straight. Yes, it's you know, it's okay. It's good hair. It's neat hair. You it's know, and at the end of the day, I think like Timber said. I mean, I am with my hair. You know, my hair does not determine my competency. You know how my hair looks it has nothing to do with what I can do, my man. you know, mentally, physically, whatever, it has nothing to do with that. So until we get through that mental barrier, you know, that we still look like we're still suffering from it, nothing's going to change. It's still going to be tough. And it's yeah. funny when you mention you compare the black hair and the white hair, yeah. and the last time that was compared in South Africa in the forefront yeah. was a click situation. And even with this story about the hair, the reason I highlighted it was to come to another situation where unfortunately clicks got involved. <laughs> and that is the Boulders Mall situation. The guy who says, I own this mall and you can't get in if you're dressed like that. Yeah. What is that dress type? Take a look. Yes. Let's cut the whole story short. Yes. Uh, we've got a right of admission. I don't condone this in my mall. So you can look like it. I'm, I'm saying here it's in Africa. In Africa. Yeah, this is Africa. Then you can't tell someone what to do or what to wear at which mall. It's a public place. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You are dressing decently. Oh, this is not decently. This is not decently. That's what you are saying. This is not. This is not. This is what you are trying to say. This is not decent. It's not decent. Oh, the, the way you wear it now is is decent. That's what you call descent. You, you are wearing Western. I'm wearing African. This is African. Africa. This is African. You are called Gigi to come. Call Gigi. Call, call Gigi. You are telling me I'm not supposed to, to wear what? African in Africa. I'm saying. What I'm saying. Oh. This is a public place. You can it it doesn't matter. We, we have a right to wear what we want to wear. You don't have to explain to us what. what I'm not allowing that. This is my mall. This is your mall. Okay, nice then. Lack of admission, it's reserved. It's a guy dressed in beautiful Ndebele attire, being refused entrance into a mall, into a shop at a mall, by a black man wearing a fucking blazer, saying that what you're wearing, not even it's unprofessional, it's indecent to come in and buy. He says indecent, yeah. He says it's basically indecent to even be at a mall, inappropriate. This is sad. Look, I mean, I saw a couple of views also on Twitter, right? Where I think he was wearing like a leather spandex underwear type of situation. Mm-hmm. Hence, maybe some people are saying it's a little bit indecent, you know. I just personally feel that that guy could have handled it a little better, especially in terms of saying that it is not, what do you say? It's not. Not appropriate. It's an appropriate attire, you know, and what he was wearing, which is obviously your blazer, is actually more appropriate. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, they could have so been handled a little bit better, a little bit better yeah. than the way they did. I mean, I think the saddest thing for me is yeah. uh, this incident and uh, the hair yeah. thing. Like, it's, it's black people oppressing yeah, black, black people. people. And it's like... According it's, to what they've been taught by the West, it's correct. You know what I mean? And it's, uh, yeah, I don't want to get like... Yeah, it's um, very sad. Racial. racial about it, but it, it clearly speaks to the fact that, you know, white it's better. and uh, white things that are deemed by white or the West as correct, you know, we still we internalize it yeah. Yeah. Not, and we still act accordingly and I mean, without even realizing sometimes we're oppressing. Do you guys feel sorry for the black people in the situations that are perpetuating this stuff in the sense that they were indoctrinated? they were taught this for so long or do you guys feel like everybody should just move on and understand the way we do but you know we've gone through a lot of learning and unlearning and unlearning unlearning, you know and i always state that myself i went to a school called worst called ben foster 
never gave a fuck about the name, whatever. Only to realize that I knew these racial dynamics don't really make sense, but because I was, I was raised in a town where the racial dynamics didn't make sense, there were a lot of white Afrikaans people yeah. and black people. I didn't realize how it didn't make sense that I would go to a school where there are four Afrikaans classes and two Afrikaans in English classes class, per yeah. grade. You know, when they started introducing Tsonga, I was one of those that, no, why do we need to learn Tsonga? We know it. Let's. And I was like, fuck, dude, learning Tsonga in school was the best thing that could have happened to me. Yeah. You know, why was I learning Afrikaans in the first place? So now that's unlearning, as you yeah. say. So should we still spare thought for our parents, our grandparents that haven't been privy to this unlearning that we've been lucky enough to have? Or is it like, yo, dude, common sense tells you that you're in Africa. That's African attire. What are I you think, saying? I think you should. We should definitely have that uh, make room for, to accommodate the fact yeah. that uh, a lot of these people grew up, the majority of yeah. their lives were spent uh, learning, yeah, being taught, learning, being taught, taught that, that is right, exactly, and, and valuing all the things that um, you know were opposite to the, the black yeah, experience, yeah. you know what I mean? So, I think we must, like, I, I see, you know, I'm sure you've all seen when like an older person is uh, almost like fearfully reverent of like a white person, yeah, yeah. you know, they treat them with crazy, like, respect, almost fear. Um, they speak, like they're automatically switched yeah. to speaking their language. And you can see, oh, okay, this person, it, it's clearly like some kind of trauma. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Should definitely, I think. Like you said, bro, some of it is trauma. And even though with this guy, my first thought with this guy is like, dog, you're so young. Yeah. How, how are you so brainwashed? But we don't know people's backgrounds. We don't know people's upbringing. So I think the best we can do is continue to just try to teach each other and learn some of the things you know and yeah i think that's that's basically all we can do you know and not stop the conversation to be like yo bro and call each other out bro yeah. i yeah. think we should be more comfortable calling each other like, bro do you know why you do that do you know why you're wearing a suit and tie for no. the show yeah. why are you guys speaking english on the show and, exactly. and interrogate everything yeah. you know so yeah i mean i think even someone like this uh, the guy in the clip like it's clear evidence that we need to be even more aggressive yes. in how much we interrogate ourselves. Exactly. You know what I mean? Because exactly. as much as it might be trauma and all that stuff, it's also inexcusable. <laughs> the sad thing is probably in the hood, everybody's plays, praising him for speaking such good English, dressing like that, wherever he's from. You're so well spoken. You're yeah. so well spoken. And that's the type of shit that gets us wrong. Yeah. You know, the whole man, I'm just like, ah, bruh, wait, you Tonga. You, 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 you don't look Tonga. Bruh. You don't. Oh, you know, and that's the dumb stuff that we do to each to other, other yeah. that, you know, keeps trampling us down. I mean, in, in America, they're like, hey, you don't look African. Then guys are like, I'm so offended. Why you say I don't look African? Then you come back and say you don't look like you're from Limpopo. So it's just about, like, climbing on, on the better black, the better black, reaching yeah. for being white, which is mainly the biggest problem. Why are we aspiring for all this Western shit that we don't understand? Yeah. We don't know, we don't understand. Why do we find value in it? But yeah, guys, for me, that's it. Any closing remarks from the panel? It's tough being black, man. You know, <laughs> but you just gotta keep it's on going. Tough. But it's tough. Like, I mean, yeah, the blacks yeah. are fighting you, whites are fighting you, the rich are fighting you, the poor are fighting, fighting you. Mm -hmm. So just gotta keep mm -hmm. on going. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think it's amazing how much the a lot, so many of the briefing stories and the topics that we have that relate to, to being black, black in South Africa, in the world. And, and now in, in, there's no white person involved. Like clicks, we're like, oh, white people do this. There's no white person involved. It's just black on nice. black. Yeah. So I think clearly we need to do a lot of internal work. Yeah. 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 No, I totally agree. But yeah, guys, that has been the show. Thanks for tuning in again. Don't forget, drop a like, subscribe, share it with a friend. And we're still at Sim Coffee. Uh, make a turn here, um, you know, get these guys tried out the food today. Uh, what did you guys think of the food? Oh, Brilliant. Had, like, yeah, <laughs> right? Was, Hangover oof. cure. <laughs> <laughs> the, proper, the proper sandwich, I think they call it. Yeah, the proper sandwich. So, yeah, guys, there's uh, internet, charging ports, sandwiches, basically everything you need Board for room. a boardroom, yeah. everything you need for a productive day at the office. So, do check them out. And, yeah, thanks for the support. Until next week. Cheers.